Today, we talked about how good Philly looked this preseason. I know it's just the preseason and highlighted some question marks with the Cowboys defense. Skip, cover your ears. But Skip does stand by his pick of the Cowboys winning the NFC. Well, speaking of that, hot off the press is ESPN's first NFL football power index, which predicts another NFC team at the top, Green Bay. They are at number one overall, followed by Seattle, Indy, Denver, and New England, rounding out the top five. Then it's those Cowboys and the Eagles in the sixth and seventh spots. Brian Clark, still here with us this morning. We're going to zone in on the Cowboys and the Eagles. Mr. Clark, who has the edge? So let's talk about today, right? Sam Bradford, amazing quarterback, extremely accurate. Uh, he's been showing, he showed that pinpoint accuracy against the Green Bay Packers last week. Defensively, they're playing a lot better. Uh, the pieces they've added in DeMarco Murray, Ryan Matthews are great pieces and fits for Chip Kelly's offense. And then yep. you can throw in Sproles in there and, and do different things. Uh, defenses can't catch up to them. Today, if they played today in the preseason, under the preseason format, and you had 85 players to put on the field, the Philadelphia Eagles are better than the Dallas Cowboys. But let's go to the regular Thank season. Thank you. I was, I was hoping Let, there was a but. Let's go to the regular season. Yeah. When there's only 53, when you can only dress out 45, when Sam Bradford has to make it through 16 games, mm -hmm. when you can't play seven defensive ends in a football game, when you're not trotting out three different teams of players to play against other defenses who haven't got the opportunity to prepare for what you're doing. That's over. Yeah. When you get in the regular season and Malcolm Jenkins and Eric Rowe and Byron Maxwell and Kiko Alonso have to play 80 snaps a week, it gets hard to stop people from scoring. When Sam Bradford is beat up, when you keep letting him get hit the way he's been getting hit in this preseason because he's playing every snap, every game, is he going to still be there? You know what's going to be there, though? That Dallas Cowboy offensive line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're going to be there. They're Thank going to be you. able to run the football. Thank you. They're going to be able to score points. And I know Tony Romo gets a, gets a bad rap, you know, because he hasn't won playoff games, and I get that. But Tony Romo is a top-tier quarterback. Tony Romo is a guy, if you're picking 10 quarterbacks, you're not scared to have him on your team to win. Tony Romo plays through injuries. He's been hurt and been able to play. Tony Romo's actually still getting better coming off of one of his yeah. best years. Yeah. So for me right now, the Dallas Cowboys are the team to beat mm. in the NFC East. Has Philadelphia taken a step on paper talent-wise? At this moment, definitely. Sam Bradford, if he's healthy, is a better quarterback than Nick Foles was. He's definitely better than Mark Sanchez is. But you mean to tell me, tell me you're banking on him being there for 16 games? I have to see it. So are they better when we look at it today? Yes. Season comes, they'll be a 10-16, and 16, a 9-17, and 17, depending on how the season goes, and the Dallas Cowboys will represent the NFC East in the playoffs. Mm, all music to my ears. Before we leave Romo behind, you did face Romo at Jerry World and, and gave him maybe his worst beating of the year. You, you blitzed him silly. You knocked him down and basically out of the game, and yet you still admire him. You still rank him in your top ten. Okay, so what happened that night that was different from other nights? What did you do to that great offensive line? You know what we did? We just blitzed them. Every, a lot, like, a, a lot of like cover every zero, play, yeah. uh, a lot of double A gap, which is two linebackers mm -hmm. sitting right on top of the center, and we came, and they just never <laughs> picked it up. It was never picked up, so it wasn't figured out by the coaches. It wasn't figured out by Tony Romo. Neither was it figured out by the offensive line. But we also played them in week 17, and so we came out, and you know, we said we're going to do the same thing. You know, we're going to come after them, but we're going to switch it up. And you know what they did? They checked. They threw it to Dez in the flat. And he's still running today, even he's with still a hurt running. hamstring. So I think that was, we surprised him. We came out, we did something mm -hmm. different. And that's going to happen to teams from time to time. But the thing that's more telling about that, he got beat up. That team got beat up. And the next week, they came back out and they played Dallas Cowboys football. Now, are they looking for a running back? Yes. But with some of the holes that they create in Dallas, me and you can go down there, Skip and get some yards. You so I think sure. I think they will find somebody to play. Doesn't have it doesn't have to be DeMarco Murray's 1800 <laughs> yards. You just have to be effective. You have to have that threat. I believe they will. I do like the Eagles. I think the Eagles will be a good team. I just don't know if that Chip Kelly scheme 
and the way he wants to run plays is conducive to allowing NFL football teams, NFL players, to be at their best late in the season. Yeah. I appreciate every, every point that you made, including your first point about preseason depth. I mean, seriously, I'm not, I'm not making a joke about this. When Tim Tebow is running your four-string offense, you're pretty deep because the four-string comes out and they start laying the wood on you too. Mm -hmm. So, so again, they just keep come, coming at you in waves, second team, third team, fourth team in preseason. Now back to your point. As a lifelong Cowboy fan, I've said this many times, I fear these Eagles because Chip has some new toys I did not see coming. I didn't know Nelson Aguilar was going to be this mm. dynamic, this much of an electric game breaker right away. I can just see it. He's I always tell Molly. The SC rookie. Yeah, yeah. When, when, I'm, when I'm watching preseason, I don't care what the score is. I don't really care exactly how the offense is moving the football i care about flashes, flashes and flashes. pops flashes and pops and, and the big <laughs> flasher and popper is this guy yep. nelson Aguilar, because he is explosive and he's not afraid he's dropped a couple but but boy he's made some plays where he's running through the defense mm. and leaves people standing still looking yeah, over been, their shoulder he's been more impressive than amari cooper that he has season. so far and amari was really amari impressive was in their game week. the other night i, I really liked him kenyon barner Bounced around a little bit, but all of a sudden, he's a duck. He's an Oregon guy, and as a returner, and also blending in a little bit as a specialist on offense, another Sproles type, he's electric. He's a game breaker. So it scares me because they added Miles Austin, and I love Jordan Matthews from Vanderbilt University, way to go Commodore. And, and he's, Jordan's turned into a, a near star. He may be a star this year. And, and obviously, Riley Cooper is still there. We know that. But... This is a very good football team, yes. except for the quarterback. And yet, here's the difference. If, if you're asking me right now, and this is the first time in my life I have loved the power index. I love you. Way to go, power <laughs> index, because I've always got issues with it. But right now, they've got Dallas at six and Philly at seven. I'm good with that. Today, I, no yeah, question. I'm good with that, just that much. Because Tony Romo is poised to be the MVP this year. You say it's the consensus pick is Andrew Luck. Maybe it's Aaron Rodgers. I think Romo should have been the MVP last year. Notwithstanding your game, which was a disaster for him, and remember, Tony got off to a terrible start in the mind's eye of all the voters because on week one, opening day at home, he throws three interceptions against a team that was about to crater, the San Francisco 49ers, mm -hmm. and they lost at home. And everybody said, same old Romo, same old Cow Cowboys. And then, of course, they started to gain momentum. Romo has grown up on and off the football field. I know several people who are close to him, and I just believe he's become a man as a quarterback, as a father, as a husband. Hope I don't eat those words, but I don't think I will. We talked about the no golf yesterday. Yeah, no golf. He finally decided, it's, it's mainly because his back is so yep. bad, the doctor said, you just can't play anymore. So it got taken away from him, and he had to focus full force through the offseason on becoming a, a, a real quarterback, not just a gunslinger who can try this or try that. And I think he's had a, a spiritual rebirth that's really calmed him down on the football field, where he doesn't take as many risks. It's like he's in a comfort zone now. That's not there. Don't worry about it. If Dez is double, don't worry about it. Just hit Terrence on the cross, you know, wh whatever it is. He, he's put, he should have been the MVP on numbers last year, on QBR numbers. He basically lapped the field in QBR last year, even above Aaron Rodgers and Andrew Luck and everyone else. I, I think that's the big difference. Even if Sam Bradford stays upright for all 16 games and plays pretty well, he is a dart thrower. He can throw those medium-range darts. And even if he does, I think Romo is going to lead the most explosive offense in the National Football League behind the best line in the National Football League. So I, I just go slight edge to Romo over Bradford, but it's not because I'm disrespecting the rest of the team. This team is loaded. And you talk, you know, I love DeMarco. I wish he were still a Dallas Cowboy. I like Ryan Matthews. That's a pretty good one-two pop right there. Definitely. And what's not to like except for quarterback versus quarterback. It comes down to that. And then one quick point. Obviously, I lost Orlando Skandrick. And I have a lot of respect for him, but as I keep telling Molly, yeah. he's not Dion Skandrick. It's not primetime. Nope, he's not that guy. 
So now you're LSU guy. You got to step up. Mo Claiborne. It's his shot. It's his shot to to regain to get back in good graces, not only with Jerry Jones but with Cowboy Nation, because you're that good. You were that good at LSU. I loved him at LSU. He would just take one side of the field and just take it away. What happened to him? I don't know for sure. He lost his confidence, I think, and now he's coming off a bad knee injury. But I, he's going to have to be that whatever. What, what was he like? The sixty there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. LSU, you're old school. You know who Skip's really worried about? The Giants and the Redskins. He's just not telling you. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Skip, you know who's a star off the field and was on the field? This guy, Ryan Clark. Can I please see some video? There he is. Oh, look at me floating. He knows I a remember thing that play. Two about playing. <laughs> I believe you, you saw that flash and pop live, right, yeah. Skip? Yeah. About playing in Pittsburgh. Expectations were high for the Steelers. A lot of drama there this offseason. Are they playoff bound? That's the combo coming up. Stay here.